Hello engineers, welcome to Engineer Brandon Speaks. Today we are going to do impulse and step response of transfer function using MATLAB. So here is an example of a transfer function. So we are going to find the impulse response of this transfer function and we are equally going to find its step response using MATLAB. So we have to define this transfer function in order to find its impulse response. So, to define a transfer function, I did in some previous video how to define transfer function. So, if you don't know how to define transfer function, you can look to the previous video. So, let us define the transfer function h of s equals to this. So, we are going to have h equals tf. This is the first method of defining transfer function. So, I'll have square bracket. 100 square bracket I'll have 1 6 and 100 so if I hit my enter button I'm going to get the continuous time transfer function so to get the impulse response of this transfer function I'll simply type in the command impulse then impulse of H then I hit my enter button so here is the impulse response of the transfer function so let me put the grid on in order to do easy calculation so to put the grid on I type in the command grid on so I notice that the grid is there is a grid on the graph so here is the impulse response of the transfer function h of s so on this graph i can be able to determine other properties to determine other properties i right click then i go to characteristic so i can determine the peak response of this transfer function so here is the peak response so to know the time at which it occurs i come here to data cuso Then I come and I click here. So I notice that a legend has come out here system H peak amplitude 6.71. That is here. This amplitude is 6.71 and it was at a time in seconds of 0 0.138. Here is a time. 0.138 here so i can also determine the settling time of this transfer function so here is the settling time so i can equally get that time by using the cursor so when i get the cursor i click here so i'm going to get the settling time in seconds to be 1.26 seconds so that is the impulse response of this transfer function. So I'm going to give you an example transfer function for you to get its impulse response. So here is it. You have five minutes. Okay, your time is up. So to get the impulse response of this transfer function J of S, so remember there are three methods of defining transfer function so here i'm going to use the zpk method because i i already know while looking at this transfer function i already know all of its roots so for the zpk method i'm going to type in the command zpk so first square bracket is for the root of the numerator negative 1 second square bracket is for the three roots of the denominator which are negative 2 negative 3 and negative 4 then after that I have the gain which is the constant multiplied to the whole transfer function which is 1 in this case so if I hit my enter button 
and notice that the transfer function has been defined as a continuous time zero pole gain model so to get the impulse response of this transfer function i simply type in the command impulse of g then i'll have to turn my brake on so brake on so here is it so here is it so here is the impulse response of the transfer function j of s so i can equally get the different properties that is the peak response and the settling time peak response so here is the peak response and the settling time so i can equally get their values using the cosor so peak response system is g peak amplitude is 0 0.0897 then at time in second 0 0.23 so here is the time 0 0.23 seconds here then for the settling time it occurs here settling time in seconds at 2.66 seconds so that is the impulse response of a transfer function so you may want to get the impulse response of a transfer function within a given interval let me see you would like to get the impulse response of the transfer function j of s within the interval 0 and let me say 3.5 so here is from 0 to 6 so we are going to get the impulse response from 0 to 3.5 so in this case so in this case I'm simply going to type in the command impulse of J then I'm going to type in comma so I said from interval 0 to 3.5 so I'm going to type in 0 for the first value column so you should keep each value by 0 0.1 or let me say 0 0.01 so that the graph is going to be smooth then 3.5 so let me put the brick on so if I hit my enter button so I notice that my impulse response has been defined from time equals 0 to time equals 3.5 so that is how we can define the impulse that is how we can find the impulse response of a transfer function okay so let us move to step response of transfer function so to get the step response of a transfer function so we are going to get the step response of this transfer function h of s so remember that h of s has been defined here so it has been stored in the workspace so we can call h of s at any moment so if i type in the command if i type in h i'm simply going to get my h at any at any moment i want since it has been stored in the workspace so I can get the step response of h of s by typing the command step of h. So if I hit my enter button, I'm going to have the step response of h of s. So let me put the brick on, let me turn the brick on. the grip is on so you notice that the grip is on so I can equally get some characteristics like the peak response of this transfer function so here is the peak response so here have system age the peak amplitude is at 1.37 which is here and I equally have an overscoop in percentage of 37.1 then it occurs at a time 0 0.322 in seconds that is the peak response so I can equally get other properties such as the settling time which occurs here 
second time in seconds is 1.12 seconds i can equally get the rise time and have the rise time here is 0 0.132 seconds i can equally get the steady state which is here the point at which the system is stable which is of course at one final value so that is a step response of h of s so i would like you to come back to this j of s and you get its step response so i give you five minutes for that okay so let us move so let us get the step response of this transfer function j of s so equally j of s was defined up so it has been stored in the workspace so if i simply type in j i'm going to get my j so to get the step response j of s i'm going to type in the command step of j then let me turn my grid on So, I have my step response for the transfer function j of s. So, from here, we can equally get the different properties. The full response, second time, rise time, and steady state. So, thank you for watching this video. Please, don't forget to like, comment, and share my videos. And we are going to move further in the feedback control system. Thank you.